Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of the KOB Podcast. I'm Tyler Trumbauer with Kistler O'Brien Fire Protection, and I want to thank you all for tuning in for what is a very special episode here for us at KOB. It's our one-year anniversary here on the KOB Podcast. That's right. Can you believe it? 12 months ago, we launched this podcast in what was just supposed to be a limited five episodes in one week to celebrate Fire Prevention Week, now has grown into a monthly podcast, not just on YouTube either. We're now anywhere you get podcasts, audio only on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and of course on YouTube as well, where we started. You can search us, Kistler O'Brien Fire Protection and the KOB Podcast to download any of our previous episodes and take a listen. So today, to celebrate... We are going to honor some of the best clips we think from what we've picked over the last 12 months. And we're going to revisit some of those excerpts from those episodes over the last year, replay them here today to celebrate what has been a very special 12 months of the KOB podcast. First up for us here to celebrate the anniversary one year of the KOB podcast is a special episode in its own right, where it was done in person at the Kistler O'Brien Fire Protection Corporate Headquarters in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, where we were with sales representative Tom Fantasia in the Kistler O'Brien training room. And let's take a listen a little bit of our conversation with Tom. And currently our system sales representative, we talked a little bit about those the clean agents and the different systems that you work with. Um, now that's not normally something when people think about fire safety, they immediately go to their mind would go to or fire extinguishers, smoke alarms, but these systems that you talk about that you work with on a daily basis, how important are those to fire and life safety as well? We talked about it a little bit with the equipment and the data that they're protecting, but you know, how do they fit into the larger puzzle piece where people normally think extinguishers, emergency signs, smoke alarms? But those clean agents and those other suppression systems are just as critical. Right. And, and what, uh, what my area, what my group, our division, I focus on is this automatic system. So uh, like a fire alarm system, I also have detection. But then I'm the first line of defense where we actually do something. Our systems react. They discharge. They extinguish a fire. Um, all the while sending out signals uh, you know, to the building to uh, central monitoring. And, and in today's industry, uh, most of our control panels have a feature where email alerts are sent. Um, so uh, we are a, uh, a detection and your first line of defense, as opposed to some of the other systems that are passive and just give you a warning and, and you know possibly have to wait for first responders or someone to investigate exactly what is going on. What a great episode that one was. Thanks again to Tom for giving us a few minutes of his time, as well as sharing his expertise for, with us. He is truly a professional and really values advancing life safety in the workplace and keeping his customers' workplaces safer. Thanks again to Tom. Be sure to check out that full episode if you haven't done so already. Speaking of Kistler O'Brien sales representatives, we did a panel podcast, if you remember. I think this was a few months ago where we had all four service sales representatives here at KOB on one podcast episode. It was quite the lively discussion with those guys. Uh, Let's take a look at a couple of back and forth exchanges in those, uh, and let's see some of the highlights from that episode. Andrew, what do you feel like this new normal will bring for you and your customer base um, in in the areas that you serve and kind of what you already may see a trend going that way, expedited by what's happened over the last few months? Sure. So I'm going to put a different spin on this, uh, I guess. So a positive spin, something that I've, I've seen and taken from this is uh, with all the changes that are happening and that we're having to adjust to, and the lack of social interactions that we're having. I think people are looking for a sense of normalcy and comfort and relation. So we have an opportunity as service salespeople 
in the life safety industry in particular, when people are already concerned enough about are my facilities and are my employees protected, we have an opportunity to really develop a, a, a new level of trust with our, uh, you know, our customers. I, I think that's extremely important. And that's invaluable. Um, that's something that I've noticed because when you when uh, I know a lot of my facilities contacts aren't on site every day, they're there maybe three days a week. You know, and then their their sites are their babies. You know that they've watched after those facilities for for decades. So to have that trust that that person's going to pick up the phone at eleven o'clock at night, you know, when you have an emergency, uh, that's happened a few times during the pandemic. And uh, you know, to be able to respond to those calls and separate ourselves from the competition. Uh, by having a personal relationship with our customers. Uh, that's something that I'm really hoping to, you know, th that this continues to go in that direction and we can capitalize, uh, you know, just by developing deeper relationships with our customers and hopefully in turn getting referrals because that's the best type of, you know, that's the best thing that, that we can get as salespeople is, you know, salespeople is referrals and and, uh, you know, then we can develop those relationships. So I'm excited about that as far as change goes with this. And, and Jason, you know, we are an essential business. We have been since day one, since that label has been coined back in March during the stay at home orders here in Pennsylvania and across the country. Um, and throughout it all, we've actually been actively hiring for people. You know, unemployment was at like the highest it has been in, in years earlier in the pandemic due to temporary closures and unfortunately permanent closures now. Um, but what I mean, how do you feel about KOB, how they've handled this whole whole pandemic and what you would tell to anybody that's looking to potentially, you know, join the KOB family based on what you know from the company being here for years and how they've operated during these unprecedented times? Well, I mean, it's it's I'm grateful that I, I work for an essential company. I mean, we're basically like a public utility. Uh, you know, the show must go on. You know, life safety can't take a back seat. Um, and I mean, you know, I can only speak from my own experience. But, uh, you know, my three and a half year tenure, um, I tell people, you know, if uh, you tried working for the rest, it's time to come work for the best. Thanks again to. Brett, Andrew, Randy, and Jason, the four service sales representatives here at KOB for their time that day. That was one of the more fun episodes to put together. I always enjoy working with those guys uh, on any type of content. Some great knowledge and guys that just truly value that customer relationship, which we touched on in that podcast episode. Uh, if you have not been able to listen to the entire episode, I encourage you to do so. So remember at the top where I said the KOB podcast started with just five episodes in five days to celebrate Fire Prevention Week back in 2020? Well, for our next look back here on our anniversary special, we are going to go back to our roots, to the original week, our launch of the KOB podcast, talking to Dan Finnegan of Siemens. Dan was tremendous on that episode tons of education, tons of information. He has it all in the fire and life safety industry, codes and everything you would think of. Dan has some type of experience and knowledge with it. And he shares some of that with us here on the KOB podcast when we were just in our infancy. So let's look back at a little bit of that conversation with Dan. Certainly. And, and taking that a step further now, you have the equipment, it's in place, but there's not just the end of the road there. You have inspections, maintenance, compliance, et cetera. And those are sometimes things that fall through the cracks. You know, folks may think no news is good news. It's not making noise. There's no alert. Um, there's no emergency symbols going on the screen. But why is it just as important to follow up and go through that checklist of getting proper inspection and maintenance and, and make sure you're in compliance as code changes? How important is that? And if just as important as getting the right equipment in step one? Right. Yeah, you know, it's an excellent point because, yeah, that first step when you're dealing with the design has to be done properly, the installation needs to be done properly, training of the building occupants, uh, but then it all kind of goes into automatic mode after that. And the key factor here is, 
our systems, the systems that your firm, Kessler O'Brien, installs to protect the buildings and occupants within your community, it has to work right the first time. We don't get a second chance in life safety. We don't get an extra chance to say, well, I'll try it again. We have to operate correctly as programmed, as designed, the minute that fire occurs. Because we know today how rapid a fire can build in today's environment with synthetic materials and all the combustible stuff that we put into our buildings today. It's more important than ever that these things work right the first time. Thanks again to Dan for joining us on the KOB podcast. Again, one of the first guests we had here on the KOB podcast before we were really growing into what we are today and continue to grow. He was there from the beginning. Thanks, Dan. And lastly, let's take a look at one more episode here from our first 12 months of podcasting here at Kistler O'Brien. Taking a look back at our conversation with Eric Minnick, who is the coroner for Lehigh County in Pennsylvania. And in addition to that, he is a lifelong volunteer firefighter. So he has quite the experience in the fire and life safety industry, not only from the firefighter perspective, but also the coroner's perspective as well. There's a lot of community and educational outreach in the school systems in the Lehigh Valley area working on fire safety education. And I thought he had a unique perspective to share with us here on the KOB podcast, and he certainly did. Let's uh, listen to a little bit of that episode as well. Um, what are some of the common reasons for fires that you feel could have been avoided with some better education and prevention tips if the folks knew that ahead of time? You know, I, I think the biggest thing, if you could point to one thing, you know, and I thought about this, if you point to one thing that comes up a lot, it's complacency. It's, it's not going to happen to me. I don't need to worry about, I don't need to practice. You know, we, when we go to schools, we talk about getting out and staying out. We talked about, you know, having an exit drill in the home. You know, we tell the kids all the time, you know, you do a fire drill at school once a month. How often do you do a fire drill at home? I've never been to a fire at a school, but I've been to plenty of fires at people's houses. So if we practice this at school where the incident rate is really low, we should be practicing at home. So that complacency level of it's not going to happen to me. I think that's the biggest takeaway. That's the one thing that if there's a, a takeaway is to be ever vigilant, whether it be in your home, your workplace, whatever it is, you know, have a level of vigilance, you know, smoke detectors are so huge, you know, too far too often, you know, from the you know, professional side of things, you know, when we have fatalities from house fires, you know, smoke detectors are a huge component where they're just not in place or they weren't functioning or they weren't tested. You know, we just changed our clock. So everyone should change their batteries. So, you know, it's little things like that, that are so simple and we kind of take for granted, but taking the extra step and being vigilant, you know, can sometimes really make all the difference. Thanks again to Eric for giving a few minutes of his time to us, taking time out of his busy schedule to give some great answers here on the KOB podcast. We are tremendously appreciative of him and all of our guests, not just the ones we spotlighted here on this month's episode for joining us here on the KOB podcast. Without them, we wouldn't have made it through 12 months of podcasting here at KOB. So to all of our guests, thank you once again. To all of you, our viewers and listeners, thank you for tuning in. Whatever platform you, you use, we appreciate it very much. I know I really appreciate it to be able to talk to you and bring you some new educational tips and other news and trends from the life safety industry. It is my honor to help facilitate those conversations and bring that to you, our audience. And we're looking forward to continue to do it. One year in, hopefully many more years to come. Once again, if you missed any of our episodes over the last year, check us out on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Search us there, KOB Podcast, and you can download any of our episodes from this past year year so that'll do it for our one year anniversary special thank you all for joining us on this ride through 12 months here's to another 12 months and many more after that we'll talk to you next month as we begin year number two of the kob podcast for kissler o'brien fire protection i'm tyler trumbauer we'll talk to you next time